Hello and welcome to the Fighting Spirit Podcast. As always, I'm Jason and we have a UFC layoff this week with the upcoming Father's Day, so I am back at it with another whiskey review. This time we're going to be taking a look at Knob Creek Single Barrel Reserve, which to be totally upfront and honest is probably one of my favorite bourbons, period. Let's get into it though. Here's the show. Alright, so we will be following the same metric that we've been using right along. We'll be judging our Knob Creek Single Barrel Reserve on bottle, look, nose, taste on the front, taste on the back price, and then we will end up giving it an overall score. So let's take a look at the bottle here. This is a very nice premium bottle. It has a nice square shape to it. It almost has like a old school medicine look about it. The label is kind of you know, uh, put on a, almost in a intentional cockeyed way to make, give it kind of a more rustic sort of hand labeled look. It has a beautiful wax top that covers a corked stopper that goes into the top of the bottle. It is a premium look all day. It's got this great kind of newsprint background just to kind of aid in the you know, um, kind of rustic nature of this. It it says it's a small batch bourbon and it definitely gives you that, that feel to it. Uh, it's aged for nine years. It has 120 proof right on it, letting us know that we are in for a little bit of rocket fuel here, but uh, we'll get into that when we get into the taste element, just a really nice overall package. I really got to say, this is some eye catching stuff. Um, maybe uh, not quite as rustic looking as a bullet bourbon, which we have yet to review, but if you've seen one of those before, they definitely have kind of a snake oil, uh, old west look about them. And I think this lines up with that. It has a great look. It's even cut with a little ridge down at the bottom. And they just a lot of little attentions to details I see here, you know, 28 stamped in the bottom. Uh, looks like some different numbers for serial authenticity on it. Just some some great looking stuff. A lot of subtlety here, really a lot to take in. Uh, definitely worth your time just to look at. And uh, it's a clear bottle as well. You can see that nice, rich, deep um, color to the finish of the whiskey. We'll get into the look in a few moments here, but it just looks really nice overall. So as a score, I'm going to give this bottle an A. Like I said earlier, this is one of my favorite whiskeys or bourbons rather, and uh, we're giving that an A on the bottle. So I have now poured this into my glass, and I'm giving it a look. I'm getting a little bit of viscousness uh, to it. You know, it's coating the glass nicely, not quite to the same degree that Weller was, if you listen to that past review, but it does have a really nice look to it as it kind of, you know, coats the glass as I stir it around here. And when I look at it, I mean, this is that deep, rich, cherry, mahogany, leather look to it that I really like uh, when you look at a bourbon. You know, we've done a lot of Irish whiskeys, you know, that have that just yellow honey nectar quality. And this one just tells you it's going to be complex right off the bat with the eye. You can see it. It just makes the light tan as you hold it up. And it's just beautiful to look at. I'm going to go honestly, though, I think the viscousness, you know, that we got with the Weller was a little more outstanding. So I think for the look, I am going to go A- minus here. I want to give it an A, but I think we were for a 60, uh, sorry, 120 proof, 60% alcohol by volume bourbon. I expected a little more viscousness here, and I'm going to go A minus, knocking it down that one level. All right, so let's go in and give this one a nose here. I'm going to get down in here. Mm, this is this is really nice stuff. There's a very small hint of ethanol, probably some of the lowest, especially for its proof that I've had. You know, the Weller was definitely a little more harsh with the alcohol. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of vanilla in here, a lot of cherry. It's almost like a really nice subtle leather quality to it. Um, maybe a bit of chestnut. You know, I'm really getting a lot of I can almost even taste kind of the acidity of a walnut in there. If you kind of know what I'm talking about, you have a nice roasted walnut, maybe a pecan. Gives out those oils and that little bit of acidity with it. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of that. Not much in the sweetness, though. I'm not getting a really tart smell to it. Yeah, I think I think that's what we're getting out of it. And I got to give this a B plus on the nose. I was looking for maybe a little more complexity. It is complex. I don't want to make it out like it isn't, but... I was expecting a few extra layers there that uh, just not meeting my expectation at the moment. 
Yeah, it's tough to really get down in there. As I try to get really deep, I am getting probably a little too much alcohol. It's a little more of a wafter if you're trying to take in the body of this. Yeah, more vanilla. This is a really nice bourbon on the nose, but I'm going to ultimately go B plus here. All right, so let's go ahead and now give this a taste for the front end, and maybe I'll sneak in a little back in there. Let's go for it. Hmm. Mm, you know, that is that is really good. All right, so obviously this being 120 proof, we do have to kind of power through the alcohol, but for its proof, it is really smooth. You know, um, there, there's definitely more smoothness in your Jamesons of the world, but there are significantly less, you know, 40%. So we're, we're talking about 50% more alcohol by volume when compared to Jameson, an extra 20% there. And it is, it is smooth. Let, let's actually try to get some taste though. I'm kind of, kind of trying to get through the alcohol, the taste. Right now I'm getting cherry mixed with the leather. I'm going to go in for another one though and, and try to differentiate what I'm getting here. So I'm going to go in one more time. Okay. That time, I think I got more of the nuts that I was talking about on that front end. You know, I was getting that walnut mixed with a little bit of the chestnut, almost like a hint of sweetness there. And then it, it sort of washes over you with a little bit of vanilla, the taste of, you know, this is going to sound weird, but like a, like a wooden quality to it, like the way you might imagine like a lawyer's desk would uh, kind of taste if you chomp down on it. I know it's a very strange way to talk, but it it's just uh, just a wood shop quality to it, and the color just makes me think it's it's beautiful, dark, rich wood. Yeah, it, it, you can definitely taste the barrel in here, aged for nine years. It's got that beautiful kind of charred quality to it, and I think you know that's ultimately what I'm getting here. I'm talking about all the nuts. It's really got to be that oak in the barrel that's coming through, just so nice. And there's a nice hint of vanilla on there. And I talked a little about cherry on the front. And, you know, it, 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 maybe there's a mild tartness. And then let's, let's get to the back here. Let's try to elaborate on the back because it does settle back there. It's not, it's not as much to it though. Really, it really hits me on the front. Yeah, I think, I think the back, now that I think about it, a little bit of, a little bit like a bitter plum and a cherry on the back, a little bit of haze to it. It definitely isn't uh, a bright taste. It does sort of just settle on the back of the palate. It lets the four flavors, the front flavors kind of settle in and just sort of warms you up on the way down. It, it's not harsh. It's not violent. It really just settles into its own. It's not there to give you anything really additional on the back, but it definitely lets you know that uh, that that front end experience with all those layers is sort of settling in, and you're going to be able to, you know, enjoy this sip by sip, and not have to think too much about it as it washes down. Just just that it's warming you up a bit in, on the way down. So, I think for the f taste on the front, we we're going to go A minus here for our taste on the front. However, the back, I think, leaves a little bit to be desired. There's not really, really any extra complexity there as far as taste. It just settles in. And I think that's just the solid B on the back. Nothing really extra. Just It just lets you take in everything that you just had and reconcile your thoughts with it. And it doesn't ask for anything more of you. So I think that's fair of a B. So we're going to go B on the back end. This now brings us to price. So you can find this bourbon for around $40 or so, and that is really a great value here, especially when you consider the alcohol by volume. I mean, you can have a half shot of this and just sip on it and get the same effect from having a full-size shot. So as far as efficiency goes, if you're just trying to have a little bit to relax and settle in, you're going to get a lot of value here uh, You know, with its high proof. Also, the flavor, the complexity, I mean, you're not going to be disappointed by this at all. It has enough alcohol and enough complexity that if you were to drink this on the rocks, you would, I think, still get a lot of flavor coming through. And of course, if you're doing it neat like me, you're going to get a lot out of it, even more so uh, than if you dilute it in any way. With that being said, this $40 price tag, I think, is perfect. It comes at a great place. Uh, it is competitive, though. At $40, you can get several other bourbons, but I think that you will not be disappointed if you happen to pick this up. 
Also, uh, as far as the way it looks, you know, I think this is going to catch your eye on the shelf, like I said earlier. So unlike something else like a Weller where you kind of got to know what you're getting before you arrive to the liquor store, I think this one here is going to catch your eye behind the bar on the top shelf or on the aisle high up so you can reach out and grab it. So for a score here, I think at $40, we got to go A-. minus. You know, we are approaching what I consider our diminishing law of alcohol returns at $40, but uh, I think this is just a really solid one and probably at the top end of where you start getting those diminishing returns. So like I said, we're going with an A- minus on the price. Which brings us to our overall score. This bourbon is going to score an A- minus on our chart. So I think this is one of the best bourbons we've done to date. Granted, we haven't done too many but I am sure this one will remain high for some time to come. So we will be doing another one of these reviews just to continue to put content out there for Saturday, and that whiskey will remain a surprise for which one I do before we get back to fight picks next Tuesday. So a little bit of housekeeping. As you know, the Fighting Spirit podcast can be found on Spotify, iTunes, and now also on YouTube. So please subscribe and like the Quote unquote video. We are just doing audio at this point and probably for the foreseeable future. But please go on there if uh, you do not uh, care to use a podcast app. You can find me on YouTube. You also can get in touch with me on email at fightingspiritpodcast at gmail.com for your questions and comments. I'd love to hear from you. Maybe you have a fight comment, you have a whiskey review you'd like me to do. Uh, please get in touch. I also am open to doing something else besides whiskey you know, rum or tequila, really anything just to kind of fill in the gaps here or just have kind of a grab bag. I'm always open to having a mailbag episode if we can get the, uh, you know, letters or emails in. Also, we are on Twitter as well. The handle is at MMAFightPicks01, where you can get in touch with us on Twitter. All right, with that being said, I will be back with another whiskey review for Saturday, and I'll be back with the Fight Picks the following Tuesday. Until then, happy fight picking.